All right, everybody, today, this afternoon, February 22nd, a beautiful sunny afternoon, we are in Adamsville, Tennessee, in McNair County. We're right by the northern Mississippi border, and there were some violent times here, but this is where a hero of mine lived with his wife, and we're approaching his house. He was a sheriff, he was law enforcement, and I'm sure most of you, not many of you heard of him. His name was Buford Hayes Pusser, and his house is now a museum. There are people who live here. This is his house, this was his house. Very famous guy here, two movies made about him, maybe three, I know they're 73 and 04. And we're gonna tell his story. We are about a half a mile west of Buford's house and this is the Adamsville Cemetery on the right here. So let's, uh, let's check it out. Very small cemetery. And we're in. Very peaceful place here. Adamsville Cemetery. Buford Pusser was born here in a little town called Finger, not too far away, December 12th, 1937. Buford's father was the police chief here in Adamsville, so he was following in his father's footsteps, no doubt. He was a high school football and basketball player. He was a pretty tall guy at six foot six. And after high school, he joined the Marines. And he was given a medical discharge because he had asthma. In 57, he moved up to Chicago where he was a local wrestler known as Buford the Bull. And that's when he married his wife, Pauline. Her name was Pauline Mullins. He married her on December 5th, 1959. Returned home in 62, and he was the Adamsville police chief and constable from 62 to 64. After incumbent sheriff James Dickey was killed in a freak auto accident, Buford was elected sheriff here and he had become basically the youngest sheriff in Tennessee's history at that point. And he promptly began his war on destroying moonshine whiskey stills. And the people he was up against included the Dixie Mafia and the State Line Mob otherwise called the State Line Bunch. He really, really upset the apple cart here. Gotta love it. Now let's step back for a moment. We'll give you a little background here. Four months before Buford took office, on May 22nd of 64, at 2.45 in the morning, a shooting happened involving this nasty woman who owned, along with her ex-husband, this, this motel called the Shamrock, a real flea bag dive. Well, it was a gambling den, a brothel, and if you didn't know, you were just driving through as a tourist, 
you could be in for some real trouble at some of these motels. Well, they were, they were south here on the border, and they were they were right on the borderline, so they could play they could play the law with the different state laws back and forth. Well, anyway, she's uh, her name is Louise Louise Anderson Hathcock, and she ended up shooting her husband, killing him with her 38. They were at the Shamrock. Of course, they owned it. I believe they owned it together. She shot him five times. And he staggered out Unit 1, which is, you know, the, the office and where they lived, or she lived. And he got to the driveway between the motel and the restaurant where he collapsed. But, of course, she did not get charged because she had a, a couple of cuts and a bruise. And she said, oh, he beat me, he beat me, he tried to rape me. And I guess in those days, uh, in these parts, and as connected as she was, she got off. So these were the criminals, some of the criminals Buford was uh, already harassing. And of course, he already knew about her and knew about her operating stills, because that's where they made most of their money, along with a guy named Carl's Douglas White, nicknamed Toehead. I'm not kidding. Not T-O-E, T-O-W-H-E-A-D. And I, I don't know, that might have actually been his name. He owned the White Iris. Now, if, as I was saying, if here's one of the plays while we're talking about it. If you were one of the unfortunates that ended up in one of these motels and you, let's say you were sitting in the restaurant in the diner and if you weren't warned, Louise would be sitting there and, you know, some men might want to go talk to her. But the game was... If you did, another guy, a big guy, would come walking in the door and take you out with brass knuckles. And then take all your money. And then if anybody wanted to intervene, well, don't mess with that guy. That's uh, this and this. So they had all kinds of scams going. It was frightening. Now, in the meantime, when all that happened, Toehead White, with Buford's pressure, he moved out of the county. Well, I don't know if he moved out of the county. He moved out of the area. He got his stills moved out of here, because I think Buford, he had knocked out a whole bunch of stills already. And he ended up getting arrested by another sheriff, James Bishop, with federal agents in that other place that he went. So he ended up in federal prison in Alabama. So we got Toehead White in prison, and it's like, okay, things are calming down. This is good. But no. Sheriff Buford gets a call from the Shamrock that guests husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Vogel, they're tourists from Illinois, said this Luis woman threatened them with a gun after stealing Mrs. Vogel's purse. Mrs. Vogel probably left it on the counter and then it disappeared, right? You could just see that. So Buford goes over there with two deputies and he walks in and he confronts her and she says, hey, let's go in the back. You know, I want to talk in private. So the office is here and there's a little kitchen and her bedroom's here. They go to her bedroom of all places. And she goes in the dresser and she pulls her old 38 and she spins around and takes 
a shot at Buford. Buford falls back in the bed. The bullet just misses his face. And she shoots again wildly as he's getting his gun. She turns, maybe heading to the bathroom, trying to like, and he like, boom, 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 takes her out. Three shots, one to the head. Louise is dead. Of course, it was all justified. You know, there was nothing wrong. And life goes on. So now Louise is out of it. There was a major incident to follow, and it was on December 11th, 1967. That towhead escapes from jail with this other guy named Julius French. So they're on the run, and about a month later, on January 2nd, Buford's attempting to follow this car. It's speeding down Highway 45. And it's a light green Chrysler with two guys inside. Guess who? And he approaches the car, and they open up, and they shoot him three times. Buford was able to drive to a hospital and get treated, luckily. And in the meantime, everybody, the heat was really turned up looking for Towhead. I mean, everyone knew it was Towhead. So sometime in the next seven months, Towhead just turns himself in. So on January 5th, 1967, Towhead turns himself in. Too much heat, too much heat. Now sometime over the next seven months, Towhead calls a guy in Oklahoma who's a mobster named Kirksey Nix, a really bad guy. And he says, I want you to assassinate Buford Puster. Take him out. A little while longer, Pusser, he's at home, it's the middle of the night, he's with Pauline in bed, sleeping, and he gets a call, it was on August 12th, that there was some trouble on New Hope Road, which is at the southern part of this county here. So he heads out, and Pauline decides to go with him. They pass this church, now it's in the middle of the night. It's called the New Hope Church. And these guys were hiding behind the church with their headlights off. And as soon as Buford and Pauline pass, they pull out with their lights off and they start catching them. Buford has no, they have no idea. Next thing you know, the headlights go on and shooting starts. They just get blasted, and poor Pauline gets hit, struck in the head, among other places probably, and she's dead. She's killed. Pusser's shot up. He hits the gas, and in a few miles, he pulls over to assess the damage. And he sees that his wife is dead. But if that's not bad enough, here they come again. They spring out from somewhere, and they shoot the heck out of him in the face. He slumps to the floorboard, and the killers, well, they left. They, were, they left him for dead, but he wasn't dead. Sadly, they had shot, among other things, half his jaw off. It was hanging, and he was garbling in the radio calling for help. And they got to him. Here is Pauline and Buford. Here's their monument. And I see here the entire family is, uh, is buried here. This is a large, large family plot. And we're going to get to everybody. So the aftermath. Just to finish the story, he ended up in the hospital. He ended up there for over 18 days. 
and following he'd have to undergo 16 surgeries. Now our friend Toehead White, by the way, he was eventually ambushed and killed at the El Rey Motel in Elkhorn County, so he got his. And Mr. Kirksey Nix, he's still alive, guys, but guess where he is? He's in prison still because that wasn't enough. He had to go out and murder some more people, and he got caught. And then he tried to bribe one of the inmates, cellmates, into taking out a judge, so he's been in isolation. And last I checked, he's still alive in prison. Go check. Maybe he's dead, I don't know. The good deal is all the bad guys got killed or put away. Buford's a hero, and they make a movie about him. And he went to, actually, they made a movie about him. It was released in 73. Yeah, and then he, he goes, literally six months later, he had signed a contract to do the part two movie. And I think it was six months later from that movie coming out. It was on August 21st, 1974. He was driving his one-year-old Corvette, traveling at a high rate of speed, and he lost control. The car slid 300 feet across the lane, hit an embankment, and he was thrown. And had, uh, among other injuries, a broken neck. He was dead. And sadly, his, even more sadly, his daughter was traveling behind him a ways with friends, and she witnessed the entire aftermath. So he is here, he is here with Pauline and this is his gravestone right here. There's a beautiful marker, sheriff, and here is Pauline. February 27th, 1934, August 12th, 1967. We have Carl, 1906, 1978. We have Helen, 1908 to 19... 87 has to be the parents, right? A recent death a couple of years ago is Duana. Sneak in between here. Duana died in 2018, three years ago. And she was born in 61, so not all that old. Here's uh, Dewana Stone. I'll zoom in on it. I'm not going to walk over there. It's, it's pr everything's pretty compact here. Dewana Pusser Garrison walking on. So is that his daughter? There's also a monument that just said Pusser. We'll look at the other side of that. And there's a nice bench here. Their monuments are beautiful, just absolutely, this is just such a beautiful place. Here. I'm going to just check around the back and see if there's, yeah, there's markings, but just it's the names, the last names, so. Well, this guy's a big hero of mine, I gotta tell you. And I'm sure he's a hero to many of you. I'm sure he wasn't perfect. Who is? But he stood for a lot of good traits and he, he has to be looked at as a good role model. 
That's for sure. So we hope that Buford and Pauline are resting in peace.